Mr. Scott, I'm, if you understand, Scottish people have a great idea, a great understanding of money. I want to speak to Mr. Bob Corker in the Senate, who really thinks that ideas of trying to balance the losses of cutting taxes would be. Mr. Corker, if you cut taxes, you'll be stimulating growth. You don't need to touch your 401k or nothing like that. You're not supposed to take away tax deductions. So, so, oh, to make up the difference. You know what will make up the difference? Economic growth. Grow up, Mr. Corker. Why don't you just stick a cork in your mouth and shut up and just sign it? Just say yay. You're not doing the country any good. I'm glad you're retiring, sir. Oh, I want to say good. Hello. I want to say hello to all my friends up there in YouTube land. I'm just getting tired of these idiots inside Congress and the Senate that don't know the difference between, this is, don't understand economics at all. I remember I was around in the 1980s when Mr. Reagan cut all the taxes which stimulate the growth. They couldn't believe, they didn't understand how when you cut taxes, revenue increased. There was no deficits. When you cut the taxes, revenue increases. People as stupid as Mr. Corker really need to hurry up and get out of the way. Just go away, Mr. Corker. And please, take that Arizona senator with you. Mr. Flake. You can take the other one too. You guys, do you understand that people in the country need help? We need relief. Businesses need help by cutting taxes. Shut your foul mouths and just get in line. You don't know a thing about economics. If you did, you'd be all in to cut taxes, to stimulate growth. Do you really need... I'm going to sing you a song, Mr. Corker. i got to make up a song. Oh, Bob Corker. Oh, Bob Corker. Oh, Bob Corker. I'm glad to see you go. You are not very, you are not very, you are not very intelligent, don't you know? Mr. Corker, go away. Mr. Corker, go away. Take the flake from Arizona with you too. Mr. Corker, what are you talking about? You're talking about balancing the budget. Cut taxes. Revenue will increase. And cut, how about... Cutting spending. How about getting... Nancy Pelosi has $196 million net worth. Why is she even collecting a salary? Why isn't she like the president? Why don't you give your salary back until the balanced, until the budget is balanced? Oh, Bob Corker. Oh, Bob Corker. Oh, Bob Corker. I'll be glad to see you go. Take all right. Take the flake, take the flake, take the flake with you. The senator from Arizona. You see, when, when the heat goes on, the snowflakes melt. Take him with you. I want to talk about fun things on this vlog. I want to talk about wonderful things. And then I read stupid things like Nancy Pelosi's got $196 million and she wants to make... Life hard for the rest of us. Chucky Schumer, he's got a little bit of money, but he's not like Nancy Pelosi. Why don't you guys that have $196 million in net worth or $34 million in net worth work for free? Help the country. You know who's working for free? Donald Trump. He doesn't need the money. You know, maybe we should get rid of salaries for people in the Senate and the Congress. Maybe they should work for free. That's what you guys try to tell us to do. By raising taxes, to s we're barely working. 35, 39%, you're not working. We're not supposed to be working for the government. We're supposed to be working for ourselves. Cut taxes to 9% income tax. 9% corporate tax. You know, the difference between an intelligent American politician in the Congress and a unicorn. There's no difference, they're both mythical. Entities. Well, maybe the honest politician, uh, Rand Paul, 
And I, I like the guy from first district of Texas in the Congress. Most of you guys are like, I like intelligent, non-existent intelligent politicians and a unicorn. You're the same as a unicorn. Please, gentlemen, wake up, smell coffee, cut taxes. That stimulates growth. Don't you, re don't you remember, Mr. Corker, in the 1980s? The eight years or nine years of growth because of Reagan? Or at least the six or seven. And then that other guy, his number two, messed it all up by raising taxes on, on uh, what was it? He says, oh, I want a luxury tax, a 10% luxury tax on yachts. And then yachts stop selling so well. I think that everyone should raise taxes and give it to the Congress people. You know what we need to do is start cutting your wages. Tax you at 97%. Take away your money like you take away ours. Pass laws so you can live like us. Get out of the way, Mr. Corker. We don't need you. Don't go away mad, Mr. Corker. Just go away. <laughs> and they think Trump is bad. Look at Mr. Corker. He's saying, well, how can we make up the deficit of the tax cuts? Should we touch the 401ks? No. The 401ks is our money. You see what happens, Mr. Corker? Let me just make it this really brief and I'm going to upload this. It's our money. You get what's left over. We pay your salary. It's our money. It's not 100% of the government's money. It's 100% of the mine money. And then we have to give you 9% or you want 39.6% and you think that's reasonable. We're doing all the work and you want to collect a third of the money. How about you collect less than 10% of the money and then tax foreign goods by, oh, like 9%. Have a tariff across the board, except for cars and car parts from Canada, that 9% across the board, foreign good tax. We'll call it a tariff. Something that used to be done in the 1800s. But we won't tax cars because American needs cheap automobiles. You know, you never think about us, do you? You never think about Americans or foreign immigrants for that matter. I'm going to be glad when Mr. Flake leaves. I'm going to be glad when Mr. Corker leaves and we can get some normal people in there. People who want to cut taxes for everybody. Live long and prosper. I hope you enjoy my little joke and with these people in the Congress. They need to be replaced by normal people. Peace out! You know, have a jolly good day. Um, Aaron Gobra. Oh, the Spanish guy put in my ear. Hasta la vista. Have a jolly good day. And for Mr. Corker and Mr. Flake, when you finally leave, I believe God will bless America. But in the meantime, God bless America.